So next up we have Jack Smith. Jack's from the Leicester Monitor Farm. Jack is the farm manager at Farmcare's Stoughton Estate. And will take us through what he thinks are the modern rec skill requirements of a farm manager. Thanks, Tim. Uh, afternoon, everybody. Yeah, first of all, um, that's me, Jack Smith. Thank you to Tim and thank you to Harry somewhere out there for volunteering me for this, uh, this role this afternoon. Um, I'm the Leicester Monitor Farmer and have been for about 18 months now, we're just going into our second year. Um, and yeah, relishing the challenge and everything that throws at us, really. So I just want to walk you through a bit. I just want to talk a bit about where I came from and how I climbed the farm management ladder. Fairly stereotypical, but we'll just go through a bit of that. And then look briefly at the current skill base. Um, some, I think we, George and I went to the same PowerPoint presentation school because I've also got a top five as well, so we'll be all right. Um, and then moving on at the end to looking at how we attract some new talent or the future new talent to the industry, especially in farm management, and also what the next 10 years may hold for us. So that's me, basically, uh, Shropshire's home originally, and I had that same battle at school with the teachers who all said, oh, we like science, you like working outside, you must be, want, want to be a vet. So when I told them I wanted to no, do agriculture, it was a battle, but one that I'm glad I won. Um, moved on up to Newcastle then, had a brilliant three years, graduated in 2010, and at the end of it, I wasn't, wasn't sure whether it was farm management or agronomy that I necessarily wanted to go into. So at the time, there was a great uh, grad scheme that the Court Farms ran, and that sort of gave me the opportunity to do um, a bit of both. Um, spent time on fruit farms, pack houses, with supermarkets, veg farms, the lot really, and it gave, gave me a bit of a grounding. Um, Learned plenty of bad habits, some good habits, but um, hopefully set me up for the future. So then the sort of opportunities then, they tended to come along at the right time. I moved in 2012 and became assistant farm manager on the Coldham Estate near Wisbeach. Um, and had a great, a great two and a half years there, arable veg, about 1,500 hectares of arable veg and, and, um, and potatoes. And uh, yeah, saw saw uh, saw through the 2012 veg harvest, which was a great uh, a great benchmark. Really, you can always go back and remember those nights at midnight in the snow in November trying to lift buds. So it could be worse. It could be 2012. Um, so that that f what just as I sort of got to at the end of two and a half years there, opportunity arose uh, to move again within the same business to the Stoughton Estate, just on the edge of Leicester, um, where I went in September 2014. And that was where I really sort of got the opportunity to cut my teeth as a manager um, and really sort of understood the jump there from assistant to um, farm management level. And it was a lot bigger than I anticipated. As, a, as an assistant, you're very much looking at uh, today, tomorrow, perhaps this week, this month. And that jump to farm manager level definitely went to all those things plus this year, next year and the next decade. And that was, that was a big shock to the system, I think. Um, I also came across a lot of things there that probably other farm managers in the room have, have, have uh, had the wonderful experience of taking on experienced staff who have their own ideas. Um, not all bad, I have to say, by any means, but it's how you work with them and how you, how you go forward. And um, I'm certainly, even three years down the line, I'm still the new man at the co-op, um, which also ended three years ago. So I think I'll always be the new man at the co-op. So, yeah, business there, about 1,650 hectares, uh, plus some contracting farming. Main challenge with everybody in Leicestershire is the black grass challenge, and it just makes you hate black grass even more because it's such a boring subject, considering how much else there is. It's interesting to look at in, in farm management. But that probably f um, forms the focus of a lot of our decisions um, because it isn't going to get any easier. Um, and by the nature of the estate, it lends itself very nicely to a stewardship programme. So we're, we, we have a long-standing 10-year ELS, HLS, and two months before I arrived, there was an inspection, and then I had that horrible phone call three weeks ago to say they were coming back for another inspection three years after the first one. So um, I'm not sure they've been run every other HLS scheme in those three years. So they obviously liked being on our estate. So going through that at the moment again. And then in more recent times, we've actually decided that the, the land type at Stoughton, it very much is a mixed farm kind of um, landscape. And so we've, we've gone back into dairy farming, not ourselves as such, but we've tented out a section of the estate, basically to try and cure that black grass problem, because it's enabled us to have a much more sustainable rotation, spring cropping, forage crops, um, muck for straw um, relationships, etc. Uh, 
uh, it just sort of all added up in the end and, and it was meant to be. So moving on then, I onto the topic today of farm management. I um I threw threw this out to to a couple of groups on WhatsApp and a couple of groups of friends and said, come on, throw throw in some ideas of, of what you think is the role of a farm manager, and got every win which one of those back plus more. Um, some 200 messages later, we were still discussing whether or not we were indeed punch bags or agronomists or somewhere in between. Um, and I think there's a lot of people in the in the room who can relate to that and probably add to it. Um, it just shows the variability of the role, um, and that's 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 crucial. And I think that's probably an, an underlying theme for today, really. So, as with Georgie, this is my top five. So, in at number five has got to be the, the role of staff manager, um, and that's that's huge. Um, there's no denying that a, a well-motivated set of staff will go that extra mile. Um, so that has to be sort of my aim. I thought when I first went there that flexibility was going to be the name, name of the game there um, to get that work-life balance, if you will. So the work-life balance is crucial to happy staff, and happy staff will go the extra mile. thought flexibility, great, we'll have multiple sprayer drivers, everybody will do it, and we'll cover all the spraying, no problem. Turns out, if you introduce too much flexibility, you lose that job ownership. And that was, um, you know, me cutting my teeth. I've probably gone back slightly the other way. It's important to have multiple people who can do those different roles, but also that ownership is, is crucial as well. Um, the succession issue that Georgie was talking about, I think it's also really crucial in, uh, in an estate situation like ours. So work for a, I work for a, a large farming company, but succession is crucial because actually in a farm management situation, it's sometimes the staff that are the constant and it's the manager that moves. Um, so I was conscious when I went there, I had uh, three chaps who worked for me, two with 40 years experience, one with 35, but nobody underneath that. So I was keen fairly early on to put something in place and we, we took somebody on, um, second time lucky, first guy didn't work out, which I think is often the, the way we're trying to take people on in farming. But second time lucky, he's now been there two years and loving it, engaging that expertise from the guys who were sort of, they won't mind me saying, probably in their twilight of their careers. But that I can't afford to lose that experience and the business can't afford to lose that experience because you know, the management perhaps isn't always the constant. So then finally, um, on, that, on that point, it's, it's that getting the buy-in. And uh, I was, my, uh, my, my wife, she was uh, quite up in, in performance sport and I could never, I couldn't, she was a rowing, I couldn't always relate to rowing, but I could always relate with a rugby analogy. So I always went back to a rugby analogy. So recently I met, I read the um, Legacy book by um, Stephen Kerr and he always refers to the, one of the All Blacks philosophies as being the, the sweep the sheds philosophy. And I think it's gone are the days of the them and the nuss management. Um, I've heard stories of farm managers who used to get their truck washed and, you know, happy days, but my truck isn't that clean, it's in the yard. And that getting the buy-in is, is crucial and that, that will only become more, more apparent. You, you, it's that, um, that team ethos, is, for, me, for me anyway, is, is crucial. So moving on. Um, you know, at, in at number four, being a technical manager, um, it's huge and everyone's had the phone call that just says it won't work, it's broken, it won't work, you always need a little bit more information than that, don't you? And then when you, when you manage to drag it out of them, you realise that, yeah, it is coming out of the ditch or it does work, there's just a little problem that's wrong with it. But if, for me, it was, it's the technical management of the machinery to try and get the most of what you pay for, so there's no end of technology out there of which how much do we honestly get from it does it actually all turn us pounds and pence at the bottom line some of it does definitely but um, being able to interrogate the machinery is crucial a to find out whether or not you should buy it in the first place and b when it is in the bottom of the ditch or broken or whatever's wrong with it um, you can try and solve it without and, uh, and as, as an assistant I probably w took the easy route sometimes you ring the dealer or use the dealer or we'll get the dealer to sort it, sort it. But actually, when you've got more control over the P&L, you realise that dealer mechanics at £75 an hour ain't very good for changing a fuse. So it's in that, that technical side of that is huge. And then from that, the IT side of it, if you can't use the IT, you very often now can't use the machinery. Um, but also making the most of the IT, because the pretty maps, we've all got them, they're useless. We've heard people talk about pretty maps. But actually, if you can't use those pretty maps and the IT that goes with those pretty maps to make business decisions, what's the point? Um, we might as well actually just combine more efficiently. Um, so that IT side is, is crucial for me. And 
And then finally, the ag chem, because um, probably the, the most enjoyable part of the job that I like is, is the agronomy side of it and doing the ag chem, um, which is a big cost saving. And as a manager, that's often what we're looking for. But staying ahead of all the rules and regs on ag chem is, is crucial and only going to get more difficult. So somehow being a technical manager of agricultural chemicals is, is huge. So moving on to number three, and probably the one that we, that we actually trained for would be the production manager. That's what we all went to college for. That's what we wanted to do. It was to grow better yields and uh, have better rotations. And that's ultimately, people talk, don't they, about the, um, the trade gap. 22 and a half billion or whatever it is in the UK and imports versus exports. The only way we're going to reduce that gap is by becoming better production managers. Um, and going forward, that's for me, is, is really important. Um, and it is the, like I say, it's the, it's the area of the job that we probably train for the most. And if I go back to my rugby analogy, the second All Blacks analogy is the stay ahead of the game. So it's that staying ahead of the game, it's actually trying to beat your neighbours. It's, uh, it's always looking for where we're going next. And that's probably what led me to doing the Monitor Farm program in the first place, the ability to then gleam some knowledge off the neighbours to try and stay ahead of that game. In at two, it's not always the most enjoyable skill, but actually I think it is now right up there, hence my putting it at number two. Being a good compliance manager is a major part of my role, and I'm sure it's a major part of other managers in the room, and, and, and not just managers, you know, business people in the room, it's, it's, it's critical. Everybody expects to go home from work safe, um, and that's a big part of what we do. If we can't guarantee that, it's a poor old do, really. Um, environmentally, that's only going to get more stringent. Um, we're trying to be, as a company farm care, I've always tried to be a step ahead, if you will, but... It's, it's a task. I've signed myself up for dairy and muck for straw and lots of slurry, but actually that does create more of a headache. Mm -hmm. But hopefully it, uh, it's for the right reasons. Red Tractor, again, just been through my audit recently. It's crucial. It plays a very valid role. But I, I increasingly find myself wondering if whether there should be a tiered system. So if, you've, if you're in a business where you want to go that extra mile with the compliance that you do, can you be better rewarded for that? Um, you almost can select your grade, if you will, because there is, there's, a, there's a big element, isn't there, of, of scraping through the audits. Well, actually, what happens if you want to go the extra mile with the audits, but there's no, there's no differentiation between those businesses, really? So I think that's a point possibly to take forward. Um, and then ultimately, it comes through to the shareholder at the end of the day and what your shareholder demands of you, whether that's a family farmer or a, or a bigger multi, um, multinational business that owns you. They, everybody puts different demands on that business and what they, may, what they may want from it. So then finally, in at number one has to be financial manager. And, um, and the key, I guess, to being that financial manager is finding the time to do it. Um, inputs, squeezing those inputs, getting them as, as, uh, as good a value for money as, as you can. Not necessarily the cheapest, but the best value for money. Finding the time to hit those overhead budgets. Um, Justification of capital demand. Every every business owner that comes to me as a manager or, or is always going to scrutinise anything that we look for. So it's it's really the, the time to to make those correct decisions. Um, and then finally, as as uh, as um, the man from HSBC says, it's benchmarking, benchmarking, benchmarking. And the underlying theme in all those things is actually finding the time to do them when you're outside in the fields. Trying to, uh, trying to fix whatever it is that somebody's rung you up and told you that it's broken. And that would have to be, you know, time management again comes back to being crucial. So that, the axis there, the price, the yield, the cost, and somebody said it to me a couple of years ago. They said, well, which one's the most important there or which one do you have the most effect over? And I always like to think that it's, it's yield because I love to be the production manager that does yield, but it's not. I think actually, and they, they're right, it's cost. We can have the most effect on cost. Um, price and yield are to a greater degree given to us, um, depending on the weather of the markets. But cost, if we spend enough time on them, we can really drive that down. Um, so it comes, yeah, ultimately it does. It comes down to that, to, the, to allowing the time. And hence, why well, that's my number one. So having looked at those things, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes looking at uh, how we attract new talent to the um, farm management industry. I've spent, obviously I've been in it now seven years, and I have spent a bit of time with farm care recruiting new new trainees, etc. Um, I wonder sometimes whether the best bits have been shelved off to, to other parts of the industry. Um, 
you know, the agronomy bit that I love to, um, very often is done by an agronomist, or the, the really exciting project is done by a consultant that's brought in, which basically means the manager in the middle is a, can be the lackey who's just running around pulling it all together. And I'm quite keen to make to sort of stop that happening, so bringing that back. You know, we, we've, we've done the training. I think we can, we can do it in-house. Um, and certainly you need to be involved with all those things. Because otherwise, and, I, and, I, and I, it's the work-life balance that suffers because you are just that guy that runs around. And I Googled farm manager, as you do when you're doing a speech on farm management, and you, on the prospects.co.uk website, there's a, there's a great bit of blurb on farm management and what you need to get into that industry. And actually, I agreed with 95% of it. But the trouble is, that statement, and they said, one of the things they say, you will be on call day and night, seven days a week. And whether they like it or not, that's going to be a turn-off. And that is on the main page, on the front of the university website, for people who might want to be farm managers. And we've all got wives, families, kids, whatever it is. That's, in the best will of the world, um, going to be a turn-off. Because, you know, you, t you hear people say, oh, I haven't had a day off in three years. Well, whose fault's that? And that, that's not the image I don't think that we want to give forward anymore for farm management if it's going to um, attract, attract the right people. Um, so I wonder, how can, we, how can we not rate farm managers? That's not fair. How can, we, um, how can you show continuous improvement? And, you know, I'm looking at myself at the moment at the Institute of Agricultural Management, becoming a member, and whether that is a professional standard. You know, land agents, they become chartered. Should farm managers become chartered? Who runs it? It's probably a discussion for later on. Um, but I was, and when I was going through this last night, one of the key things for me was that I did a great grad scheme, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was rough. You know, you had to sleep in some odd places and camp on some odd floors at times. But um, it was brilliant. But there's less and less of those. Um, there's less companies running grad schemes because they tend to make the investment and then the grads go off elsewhere. So I wonder whether or not, you know, something, a grad scheme should be um, administered by, by a, a management body um, to give estates out there who can't necessarily afford to take on a manager for two years and then lose them every time, to give them that opportunity to just have a trainee in for six months. Um, because it, it, otherwise it will lose that training element of it, um, which is crucial. So then finally, I just want to sum up and say, yeah, farm managers in the next 10 years, well, they are, they are those things we argued before. We'll have to head up multi-skilled teams. Um, and by that, I mean not just people that can drive tractors and, and do the, the, the donkey work, but actually um, do some of the jobs that you employ external advisors to do. So I think the, skill, the teams are more and more skilled, and actually we might not need to spend money outside the business now. Let's use our teams for, for different roles. Um, or can they take pressure off, off somebody like myself to, to be doing the field walking whilst I'm doing something else? Technology critics, there'll be a lot of technology thrown at us in the next 10 years for sure. There always is. Um, not all of it's going to re return any kind of pounds and pence at the end of the day. So sometimes it's just getting back to basics and becoming good farmers. Driving that production, that, you know, number three on the list, just, just effectively getting better yields, get a better, um, better production standards in the UK. And, and that leads yeah, very nicely on to keeping standards high because we sort of, we, we, we shout about UK ag, don't we? And it was touched on earlier on in the day that actually if we are going to do things and say we do things, then we ought really to do them. Um, otherwise, sooner or later, with the, with the power of social media, we'll, we'll, we'll lose out and somebody will call our bluff. So that's got to keep that standards high. And ultimately, to make sure that UK Ag Limited returns a profit. And, and that, is at the, that, is, that, that, um, that element is at, the, is at our hands, really, as farm managers, and driving that profitability. Because without profitability, the businesses won't be there for the farm managers to work in. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. And um, look forward to any questions later on. Perfect. 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 Perfect.